This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Made to Measure Leggings class from SewHere.com. This online class brings ZD right into your sewing room to show you how to measure, draft, and construct a pair of leggings based on your personal measurements. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings to find out more and get access to all the videos and course materials immediately. That's SewHere.com slash leggings. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Mallory Donahue. And this is ZD Donahue. And today we're going to talk about circle skirts. Yes. 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 yes circle One of skirts. my favorite things. Woo-hoo! All right. So. Hey, Mallory, uh, you, how many circle skirts do you think <laughs> I've made in my lifetime? Somebody's going to email me and be like, how could she have made that many? Because right. I, I make know, like thousands. 40 at a time. Also, yeah. because. Okay, the one set of circle skirts and thing that you made. You're talking about the white ones. There were forty of them. Not a, and, and three layers. There were. Was it only three? I thought it was three. Okay, so you so technically right. you made forty skirts that got so worn, that was 120. But you cut out 120. It was 120, okay. but only it was only 30 waistbands yes, or 40 it, waistbands right, or whatever. Exactly. Right, exactly. There's right, a billion right. freaking you know but circles, there were, and each layer was a different type of fabric. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And those circle skirts are still um they're still floating being, around they are still, Columbia, yes. Missouri. Okay, they are still. <laughs> They they have like this rotation through um, show choirs and, and uh, tree skirts and uh, yeah that's true and um, what do I want to say community, community theater, theater yes and... someone will show up with one and I'll be like oh I know where that came <laughs> from you know and well they were white yes yes so very versatile right. um, and they were they're very um, flowy and lightweight well and the other thing yeah and the other thing too is i actually made those for that purpose of i didn't i knew i wanted to use the try and use them for two well at least two years Mm -hmm. in show choir Mm -hmm. so you know the they met their purpose well yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah uh okay so we had a skirt controversy a while back in the in the group, so we're going to define a circle skirt here. Oh, right. I, do you remember the that? Gores the gores the versus the circle. versus the circle. Yeah, so what is a circle skirt, Mom? Well, it definitely has to be cut as a circle and out of... Okay, so I believe it has to be cut out of basically one piece of fabric in... It gives a biased direction, right? To part, of, yes. To yes. To part right, of it. Now right. we'll learn later in the podcast. Sometimes you can't get a circle skirt out of one piece of fabric, right. depending on you its can't size. get it out of basically like, you know, a fold over this way and a fold over right. that way, right? But the controversial skirt that right. was posted in the group, it was a circle that was pieced. Out of several gores. gores. And so and it, it made a circle. And it made a circle. It did make a circle. But what this meant was that no part of the skirt that was hanging down was on the right. bias. So the, the entire the skirt was a circle, mm-hmm. but it was on the straighter grain. Yeah. So you did not get the exact flow right. that you would get out of what we define as a circle skirt. And, you know... Some of that's semantics. Some of it isn't. Because what if you want the bias flow? Right. And it's not. there's nothing wrong with making it like that. And no, she either way. It, she was making it like that because it was border. She had right? a border print. Yeah, and border she print. wanted to maintain, mm-hmm. you know, the look of that fabric, which is absolutely makes right. sense to do. Right. right. I'll, have to, I'll have to look up that post. But it was kind of funny because Edie was like, it's not. We I think we talked about it on the it's live broadcast. It's not a true circle. Wasn't it a true circle? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, because, again, you're going to treat the waist different. You're going to treat the hem yes. different. So, I mean, when you're talking, it, it, you know. Things about language, again, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the word defines what that specific item or the entity or the characteristics right, of something right. is. Uh, right. So that was skirt gate. Okay. Yes. Uh, so a circle skirt, though, it looks like a circle when it's laid out flat on your table. Right. Okay. And uh, your waist is a circle and then the hem is a circle. So it looks like a donut. It looks like a donut. Okay. There are... 
uh, also half circle skirts and yes. three quarter circle skirts, right. which can give you once again that like benefit of all that fabric in one piece, which can give you a nice right. look. You'll just have less volume. Just less volume, right? And the you know the characteristics of a circle skirt can change based on a lot of things. We're going to talk about some different fabrics. Right. Uh, wovens versus knits. I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't made a circle skirt out of. Yeah. Because I've done wool. I've done all kinds of bizarre polyesters that I didn't even know what they were. Dot sequin. Dot <laughs> sequins. Um, lots of rayon circle skirts. Yeah. Um, the um, organzas. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, know. When we talk about volume, I think this is a really good picture for people because sometimes people think they want a full circle. Right. But that is a lot of fabric. It's a lot of fabric. So if you want to think about a full circle skirt, imagine a round table with a round tablecloth on it. Right. And then you cut a hole. And that is what it is. But you cut a hole in the middle and then you stand in there. And you're going to have all that fabric, except it's all going to fall down Mm -hmm. because you don't wear a table underneath your skirt. Now, you could wear. You can wear a crinoline or a petticoat. Or a petticoat or something. And. I actually just made a circle skirt to that purpose right. for a friend of mine. But sometimes when you want this skirt, that much volume isn't appropriate for the type of fabric you're using. Mm-hmm. It can make or it heavy make it real heavy. or just too voluminous. Just, yes, you know, it's exactly. too much skirt. Yep. You might you might not actually want it. A lot of it. times, um, like a child, I yeah. will cut down to a three-quarter. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Like a small child where it's not too long, like a little tiny right. one, a full circle's fine because mm-hmm. there's not that much fabric. But as a child gets maybe taller, say like three feet tall or something like that, when you go to make that skirt, it might wind up with too much volume around for them to deal with. Like, right. you know, it just gets in the way. And, of course, if you make this skirt out of something very flowing mm-hmm. and lightweight, like a rayon or something like that, all of that volume can be very, very pleasing right. to you or right. and not get in your way as much. Right. But if you make yourself, I don't know, like a denim circle skirt a and, wool, there's, and there's no support like under right. it or something, you just might end up with a ton of extra volume. Mm-hmm. So you can you can see um, you can you might actually want to, you know, perhaps do a three quarter circle. But let's talk a little bit about the pattern for a circle skirt. So circles, what's a what's a number? It's really important to circles, Mom. Pi. Okay. I know pi. I'm going to see if you know it. Okay. 3.141592. Two, two. That's it. That's all I know. 2653592 from... on forever and ever. So and what's ever that called? Ever. What's that kind of number called? <laughs> We're really smart around here. Oh, my gosh. You have, you put a line over it's it. It's called like an undefined or a... Right. No. Ah, ah we need okay, the math well, people. Anyway. I well, used to know. Um. Anyway, so... So, you know, what it is, right? It's a number. It's a number that defines the area, right? The, well, or the diameter or the radius the of a... It's the ratio. Right. Okay. Of a, of a circle. Of a circle's circumference to its diameter right okay but this is how you find all those things out right right yes. okay so um anyway 3.14 is what it generally gets um rounded to and then that makes march 14th over here that's why it's called pie day uh yes pie day now over in so everybody makes pies p-i-e where the number the ratio is p-i and then also pies are often circle shaped so it's just it all so works out perfect. and then they get divided and the, yeah right and then they're to, cut into pie shapes and then you get to eat them okay <laughs> uh so that's wonderful but hey over in um places where they don't put the month first where they put the day first yeah i mean there is no pie day because there's no 31st of april Oh, yeah, that's sad. Yeah, and there's no 14th month. Right. Right. So I guess there could be something to do. So pie is definitely a... Like a... Western invention, pie day. Pie day. day. It's got to be like an American invention. Well, and then, you know, we... People make up days so they can yeah, do right. happy things, you know, and, like the may the fourth be with you yeah. and things like that. So pie is, pie is fun. I'm sure people will reverse that uh, even in places where they do the day first, which actually makes a little more sense. I know. I understand. <laughs> We're behind the times. Okay, so pie is 3.14. 
this is how you're going to figure out how to cut your circle skirt out, blah, blah, blah. But there is an easier way. (laughs) Yes. Now, definitely now now there is. Now, you can go to uh, some online circle skirt calculators. That's right. And they will do some of this work for you. And there, I guess, Mom, you say there's a few out there? Yeah, there's more than one. Okay, well, the yeah. one that I'm going to just call out In and fact, recommend. I don't think I've ever seen this one that you're, you're talking oh, really? about. No, okay. this is, but I like it. It has little pictures of also like... A quarter and a half yes. and a full. Yes. No, it's you know it's the bee's it, knees. And they they even put a picture of a mini skirt, a midi, and a ma- when I yes. say a picture of a skirt, it's a picture of like that what the pattern piece would look yep. like or what it looks like when it's cut out. And it so conceptually it it really gets it there for you. Yeah. So right. I just have to draw all these pictures for everybody. Right. This circle skirt calculator is by a company called By Hand London. And they publish patterns. They're, they they make some really pretty stuff. Um, so, but they they got this sort of app designed. And the first thing you do is you decide if you want to work in inches or centimeters. Then you decide if you want a quarter, a half, or a full circle skirt. I, d- I think I said three quarters of a circle Actually, earlier. I'm sorry. Where did you get the? I've got mine stuck on inches, but well, go go up, uh, go up. There oh, okay. So there so you, you choose pick up inches there. and centimeters. I see. Okay. okay, blah blah blah, and then you choose the length of the circle skirt, which that's really cool. Right. So, so the three point one four is the inch number. That oh, thank By you. By the way, thank okay, you. Okay, all of you that work in in uh, centimeters. Okay, so anyway, you get to pick all these things, all these lengths, and and all that jazz. And this one actually, which I didn't know the first mm-hmm. time, it includes a seam allowance for you. Oh, it includes a five eighths oh, inch okay. seam allowance, so that's sure. really nice. So they're really, it's really this calculator designed yeah. for the sewist. Also, yes. what it will do is say your skirt Does pattern. Does it show you how to fold the fabric yes. too? Yeah. All so right. it'll say your skirt pattern fits on a forty five inch or a sixty inch wide mm-hmm. fabric, or it'll say, "Hey, heads up, it won't." Well, it won't. Okay. So you need to. So it shows you the fabric layout. Will it show you how to piece yeah. that fabric to get your? Well, layout. it shows you how to get a your. Your pattern, right? Okay, okay, so it'll it'll show you how to fold the fabric. Right. It doesn't say then sew the straight seams together, but like then right. you do, right? So it shows you how to fold it. Shows you what width fabric you need. Now, the measurements that you need when going into this circle skirt thing, okay? For a traditional circle skirt, we'll cover some very vari- some other variations. Mm-hmm. You need your waist measurement. You need your waist. Then you need to know how long you want right. the circle skirt. So from your waist mm-hmm. to the hem of your skirt is right. what you want. Now, I always added to that. You know, sure. I would add two inches to that. And you know. That's what those lengths are on here. Right. But what I think is kind of funny is they call like 20 inches a mini skirt. And I'm like, oh, no, that's like Not 20. on me. <laughs> Just, on me, that's kind of long, which is yeah, fine. That's, but that would be a midi. You know, uh, I'm the I'm the girl that can wear crop pants, buy crop pants, and right. like full length. So if you have short legs, or you know, right. so you can you can mess with this a little bit. Um, but what you do for a traditional circle skirt is you fold a fabric in half, like selvage to selvage, mm-hmm. and then you fold it in half again, again, making a mm-hmm. fold that is pe- uh, perpendicular right. to the selvages and. And if you did that and didn't have to seam anything, uh-huh. right, it would mean that, you know, your your pattern or, you know, your what you cut your out, translation your of uh-huh. your measurements, you know, couldn't be any longer right. than that fabric was folded in half. Yeah, so half if you have fabric. a 60-inch piece of mm-hmm. fabric... It it can't be longer than thirty. Now for me, I can get a ton of skirts that fit me in that right. You know, in that limitation. But so what you had to think of is it's your waist measurement, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, it, well, it's your waist res- measurement divided by pi divided by two. Right? Yeah. Okay. So right. The the formula that I always seem to be able to remember is, um, you know, the circumference equals 2 pi r. Right. So then you have to undo that because your right. waist is your circumference, right? It's got to do some algebra. So those right. of you who – people who are like, oh, I'm never going to use math in my life. I use math all the time in Oh, sewing. my gosh. People would go out of their mind when I would say pi in, in, class. in class. They want to take a circle skirt class. And I'd say, now we're going to use pi. And, well, some of them didn't know what I was talking about. And right. I always would go, I can't 
do this. And I'm right. like, yes, you can. It, it, it's, it's you a, know, it's everyday life. But, you know, we have circles. Okay, I think we've been socialized. A lot of women have been socialized. Well, especially to say women. That bad I at think math. Especially uh-huh. women. Yeah. I really try not to say that around Zelda, even though I think right. that I am more proficient in other things like right. language and right. stuff. I right. never say I'm bad at math in right. front of her. So I don't, say, I don't it. say I'm bad at anything. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't say I'm bad at anything. <laughs> I'll say, you know, I'm not really. I'm going to look that Oh, you up. know what? I bet I could figure out how to do that. Okay. So, and that too is really important because since you've, since you have uh, folded this fabric into right. quarter, uh, you kind of four layers there. Correct. You're not working with the diameter anymore. That's You're right. working with the radius. Radius, okay. radius is half of the diameter. Yeah. I, this part is so visual and would be so well explained by that app and by the stuff. App. Okay. Or any, and, and you know, some of you out there may have other apps and you can put them in sure. the comments if you think yeah. you like them or they're better or whatever. But, uh, you know, this one is, is quite... Um, oh, I love it. I love it so much. Okay. Comprehensive, I would so, say. So then when you do, when you do have that folded into those four layers, you've got your point up there and you can mark your radius. Right. Okay. Which the... Your calculations will have given you. The app will have That's given correct. you. Okay. And then make sure, though, that when you mark the, like, the hem, that you go from your radius. Don't go from your center point. Your hem goes from the waist mm-hmm. area, that So you aren't circle. telling them how you're getting your radius. No, I'm. Right. Well, I said, you know, 2 we, we talked R about it, right. and all that yeah, jazz. Yeah. So if you have, like, a 30-inch, let's say you have a 31.4-inch waist. Oh, what? <laughs> and then you divide that by 3.14, and you get 10. Then you divide that by 2. You have your radius five. is 5. Right. Isn't that a convenient measurement? Yeah. Okay. So, so from the point of all the folds. You're measuring 5 inches. You're measuring 5 inches out and making a circle. So you're using a string, you know, that's 5 inches. Or, so or everybody, ruler. I'm assuming most people know how to pick a point mm-hmm. and draw a circle around. Yeah. yeah. You keep that 5 inches from that point. And then let's say you want your skirt to be 20 inches long. Mm-hmm. You need to measure the 20 inches from your radius that you just marked. That was or, 5. So now you've got 20. That's 25 inches yes, or from you could do, that fold. Right. Or you could add your radius on, right? And, yeah. Now, the other thing that people don't take into account here, and I haven't, I'm not familiar with this app, Mallory okay. is. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that's not taken into account here is seam allowance for your waistband. Seam allowance for, are, you know, are you, how are you, so when you go in there, if you're taking a half inch or five eighths of an inch or three quarter, you know, three eighths of an inch or whatever you're taking for your waistband, it will change the size of the diameter. Okay, I'm gonna see. It will make it bigger. Yeah. Okay, and it will make your length maybe shorter. It, and that's sort of a variable there because your waistband sort of adds length too. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to now. That's why I just add two inches to my skirt. Okay, I just want to say. On the by mm-hmm. hand London thing, and this is where I kind of uh-huh. uh, messed with, okay, uh, this, it said, our workings include seam allowances of five-eighths of an inch and hem allowances of one inch. So I believe that that means- You think it accounts the waist. the waistband. So if your number was five, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. and you really did really want to be very, very accurate about it, and right. you wanted that to sit right on your waist mm-hmm. at exactly that, you know, you would have to take away- Five eighths inches right. from that five. You would so you would have four, right? Yeah, and three eighths yes. length. Yes, right. Now I think they did that here. Okay, okay. So that's cool. Now, if you're making a batch of these for show choir, uh huh, like I was, right, right, and um, I put the waist was actually eight piece of elastic, right? Okay, so I was just basically surging the elastic onto mm-hmm. the the open the mm-hmm. waist opening what i did is and i made these skirts sort of fit a range of people right so i had my like 30 to 33 inch waist mm-hmm. and then my 33s to 36s or whatever so all i did is i just divided by 3 right. i didn't even worry about my 1.4 well and yeah and let's yeah. let's come back to that too when we mm-hmm. talk about a woven one that's gathered right. cuz there are different ways to do There's this different ways to do it so what we've been talking about so far is a woven skirt that's going to get a closure in it. Yes, yeah, so it's got to have a zipper yeah. or a slit or something. Something. You know. So as of right now, you have this O, you know, cut out 
and the donut. This donut. Mm-hmm. And for most people, not all people, your waist is smaller than your hips. Right. You would not be able to just put this on right now. Okay. Right. So you do then have to cut a slit. Yes. In your circle skirt, like what I Unless did. Unless you wind up with a seam. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if this if this right. was though like a whole piece of right, right, like just one piece of fabric, you have to cut that slit and you have to insert some kind of closure. My favorite would be an invisible zipper. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what I just did for a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are different ways to add uh, ease to make right. a gathered circle skirt, to make a circle skirt with a knit, etc. And so now that we've kind of covered these sort of the so basic now that we have blown your mind, okay, yeah. of a circle skirt, and we've gone around. I like I said, I didn't want to be like do this calculation. Then da 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 da. Now that we've kind of covered that, let's take a little break and let's come back with some techniques for cutting, and then some techniques for calculating when you're going to do this a little bit differently. Right. And just basically right. you're changing the style by yeah. how you're, you know, going to wear this at the waist. Okay. We'll be right back. Hey ZD, wouldn't it be cool if everyone who listened to this podcast could learn how to make perfectly fitting leggings directly from you, the leggings expert? Well, yes, Mal. That's why we produce the Made to Measure Leggings class. I teach anyone, no matter their age, ability, or gender, to make perfectly fitting leggings based on their measurements. And if someone is feeling particularly generous, they can make leggings for anyone who they can get to stand still long enough to measure. You, yes you, can get immediate access to all the videos and course materials in the Made to Measure Leggings class by going to SewHere.com slash leggings. This online class allows you to complete the process at your own pace, and you own it forever, so you can rewatch it as many times as you need. Stop struggling with the leggings that roll down or sag in the wrong places. I'll be your guide as you create leggings that are made especially for you. No matter what your equipment or skill level, ZD covers everything from measuring, drafting, cutting, and construction on a sewing machine or serger in this class. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings and get started today. sewing out loud. And we're back. Yes, we are. Okay, so this is a... Just something I thought we should cover before we go into the variations. We talked about marking the waistline, mm-hmm. the radius that you're going to get with the fancy calculation. Right. And then marking the hemline, mm-hmm. which you get from your hem measurement. Or <laughs> or you can take that round tablecloth and you'll have to cut the waist. There you go. Just get a round <laughs> tablecloth. Perfect. All you people. We, did, we just published the retail actually, thrifting actually, episode. I made one for a play one time where it was had a big old ruffle on the end, you know. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I did. Ta-da. I just cut a hole and it, the ruffle was there. Okay. I was trying to streamline this process. I don't, of course, Mallory's Mom had to bring up. Mallory's them. trying to be concise yeah, and I ruined know. it. Okay. Well, what's new, right? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we... <laughs> So you mark those things, but you didn't you didn't like mark the waist and then cut it and then nope. measure and da 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 da. And I only marked on one layer. Yeah. My top layer. You mark on one layer. And you can leave it folded. You can decide if you want right side out or wrong side out. Right. Um where you're doing these marks are probably gonna disappear into your sewing. Right. So then you first you're going to cut the hemline, right? I do because it's more you know, it, it just stays more still. So I've mar I mean I've marked it, and I hope everybody understands how you mark it. So you're going to have to measure from that one point where those four layers are um, folded and mark from that. And, do, you know, I use a choco liner, kind of. Some people you know, can use it. You can use you a pencil. You can use it, right. Some people take a string and measure it out yep. and actually, you know, uh-huh. take that, you know, their marker on that string and do that, you know, make a circle with a the line or what but anyway we've marked the bottom and we've marked the top and you can just lay weights on top of your fabric do lay yes right you do want it weighted mm-hmm. um don't want it you to can shift. pin it but i think pinning distorts it some too 
Don't pin it. Oh, yeah, I, put, I think you're better off with weights. Just put your cat on there. Yeah, put, okay. put, oh, no. put your cat's <laughs> cat food cans on there, there that go. are still full. So you um, cut that circle that's the hem. Put your cell phone on there. It's, there. You know, well, cell, cell phones, phones are always there. a great way. It's always there because yep. my calculations are there often. That's right. And then you and have then it, I just right? am looking at them. Or sometimes you have your little whatever app or whatever yep. website, you know, my you're, pod, you're going listening from. Or your something. Pinterest picture that yep. you're, you know, trying to match. No, and it's on your cell phone. So you cut the hem. You cut the hem first because you are trying to keep it stable up top. Right. I mean, that holds it basically stable. What do I use? Good old rotary cutter. Of course, it is the easiest. You're cutting a big curve. Cutting a big curve. And you just curve. cut. You can cut, you know, Mallory and I have an amazing pair of shears. We and did. Two amazing pairs of shears or so. And we still cut with our, I mean, not that we don't want those shears. There are times when you want those shears. But. Um, that rotary cutter is the simplest for this because cutting a curve with a, right. with a round, with a round instrument is, is easier. Is easier. I would look like a very silly fool. I'm not good at cutting curves with scissors because I'm so used to doing it with the rotary right. cutter. Okay, so you cut the hem. Then what do you do next? Then you go to the waist where the where the you know line that you measured for the waistline. Okay, and then what you really need to do right away is go stay stitch that waistline. Well, are you going to cut? Well, okay. We, we were discussing We were this. discussing this. There's a lot of different how ways. How we put in a closure if we need a zipper there. Okay, but there. You, no matter how you're going to cut that open, you could go stay stitch your waistline, wouldn't you? Or do you want to well, stay at the cutting I, table? Well, what I'm saying is if you're going to cut that open for a zipper yeah. and you're going to go all the way down the skirt, I would just stay right stay there. Stay at your cutting table. And I would cut down that fold. Okay, that's what I did when I did yes. my friends. We're that's not, what I would do. We're not going to uh, only cut one layer of fold. <laughs> yes, do not cut through like all four I mean, layers. I of mean, your if you did, straight. you can piece it together. But the best thing for you, the most concise yes. manner, would be to just cut through, you know, one layer on that fold so you can insert a zipper. That's and where Mallory we... wanted to insert a an invisible an invisible zipper. zipper. I have also inserted a regular, you like know, coiled zipper kind of, yeah. or, or metal zipper or whatever. And I have actually made like a facing, like a keyhole facing on, you make at the neckline on something. So there are different ways to put zippers in. Okay, and most of you know that. And when you're cutting along that fold, that's where we get at that nice pair of shears, right? Yes. Okay. So yes. cut kind of yes. sideways. The other thing you could do is while that fold is there, mm -hmm. is take your marker and mark, you know, going down that yeah. fold every two inches or so. Actually, you know. Mathematically, you only have to have three points right. to make a straight line. So it would mean, you know, one sort of in the middle of that fold and then one down at the end by the the um, hem and one at the top. And then if you laid a long straight edge on that, you would have a straight. Don't think you will have a straight line if you just draw a line from the waistline to the hem. Or just have dots there. Yeah. No, no, no. What I'm saying is... It can be on an angle. You don't want it on an angle. You yes. want it straight. That's right. That's yes. right. So um, the other thing about having it like that in that place on that fold is you have it on the straight of grain. Right. 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 Yes. You should. That really. So if you unfolded that and went back uh -huh. without marking it uh -huh. first, right, you would have trouble finding yeah. your straight of grain. So you're saying don't move it before you do whatever cutting right. that you At might least, do. Well, mark it or mark cut it. Mark it or cut it. Great. No. Great advice. Great advice. And... So you're going to do that, and actually the way we folded it, if you did salvages together first and then fold it over again, that is on one the of warp. Your, it would, right, right. The most stable. Well. It it's the long way. It, yeah. It yeah, is. It's yeah. parallel to the salvage. Right. Yeah. Yeah, if you did, if you folded it the way we said to fold it. Okay, which it's okay if you do another, a different fold, but anyway, right. that would be the way to do it. If you did it parallel to the salvage that way, you'd be on that most stable um part of the fabric theoretically okay then stay stitch your waistline yes yes right i was trying to like please you by mm -hmm. by emphasizing this point mm -hmm. act please mm -hmm. be like yeah man, yeah great yeah job. where <laughs> tell me where you stay stitch the... oh my god i, I want to know i, I want to know so i would use i want to know i would use my 2.5 millimeter mm -hmm. stitch length and many 
people will tell you you only have to baste it. That is wrong. Yeah, I, I would, really feel that is wrong. It won't stabilize. Yeah, it. so we want to stabilize mm-hmm. it. So this is literally to take away the stretch mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that circle is a circle, mm-hmm. and it. So what it's doing is it's creating an infinite amount of points. That's right. On and the more points, the more, the more stable. Yeah, some of the more unstable parts of your fabric. It's getting all that bias. Right. There's only like four places on that circle that are on the perfect straight of grain That's or right. on the cross grain, right? So um, anyway. I just do it like a quarter inch away. Okay. What do you do? I What I would like to do is, depending, okay, so if I'm going to take a 5 eighths inch seam allowance, uh-huh. right, I would probably do it at a half inch. Okay. Or I would know where my 5 eighths is and I would click my needle over. Yeah. You know, a couple centimeters or a and couple millimeters of or what. Yes. Okay. And do it from the inside. I would have it as close to my seam line okay. as I could get it. Your one quarter inch is probably fine. Not not too bad, but no, no, no. but you make and that makes sense. And that's what people say. So over on this baby but, lock here. But if I will tell you from experience, the closer you are to your seam line, the more likely you're gonna have a cleaner, better No, that's that's you know, that's a good yeah. idea. That's what I should do. I, I fully concede yeah. there. What a twist for quarter the Quarter inch works for you. But and the other thing too is you were only making one skirt, right. you were handling Did it, it right carefully. Away. So I'm I'm even talking about so what if you are making fifteen yeah. skirts? It's better if you do it where if you handle them or have to overhandle them, Mm -hmm. you've got a better stabilization. So over here on this baby lock, if I've got my needle over in the Uh left position, it's like my fabric has to be, the rodge of my fabric has to be a little to the right of my foot. Uh So I could just line up the rodge of my fabric with my foot. Exactly. And it would be fine. And, you know, yeah, I, I would say try to do it. A quarter inch or less away from the seam allowance. Okay. That's what I would toward, say. Toward the inner uh, circle there. Towards yeah. the circle, yeah. right. Okay. So you're not going to take that out afterwards or anything. No, and it's no, not, you won't. Like you said, it's not a basting stitch. No. It is a stay stitch. It's a, that's, you know why they call it a stay stitch? Just make it stay. Every, it makes everything stays and it stays. Yeah. So this applies yeah. to woven fabrics, okay? You aren't going to stay stitch your knit probably. Would you, that, like, no, you right? shouldn't have to. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Different, different story there. Okay, now let's talk about, then you would proceed to construct, but let's mm-hmm. veer off here. Okay. Okay. And let's talk about how maybe this should be a two part podcast <laughs> because it's going to be so long. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we should just talk about hemming and finishing a traditional woven circle skirt like this and then do the next episode about those variations. Oh, okay. About okay. the different fabrics All right. or so whatever. Last minute and um, variations. Last minute. So this will be called Circle Skirt, and then there will be another podcast called Circle Skirt Variation. Two or something. Or something yeah. Like that. Okay, fine. So here we are, and we've inserted mm-hmm. our zipper. So what I did mm-hmm. recently for my friend who was in the show Hairspray is I came home and I made this circle skirt for her, and I slit the circle skirt all the way down from waist line to hemline, right? And I inserted an invisible zipper. Right. This circle skirt was not lined. Okay, she was wearing, heavy enough. It didn't need it for one. And thing. she was wearing a crinoline, and I she knew. had a big crinoline. And right. actually, one thing where I lucked out is I had not measured the crinoline. Oh, you okay. Didn't know how long it was? I didn't know yeah. how long it was. I was kind of doing this last minute. She was looking for a circle skirt online. I found that we had the perfect fabric. But if you know it's going to go over a crinoline, that's what you need to measure. So okay. if you had not, what what if it came up short? Let's. I, I, I don't know, but let's let's yeah. talk about the basic. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the basics first. That'll be in the next episode. That'll be in the next episode. Okay, I'm uh, writing that down. Oh, if yes. you come up short, do that. Do that. Write that down. Okay. The other thing is, most of the time, your petticoats shouldn't show. If you are depicting a person who is wearing a petticoat like day to day or crinoline like day to day, it it shouldn't show. Okay. If you're doing something artistic. Uh, you're doing like a dance a costume or so of course you know there's an opportunity for that but they were not worn as their own like they were an undergarment right it okay. was a, it was called a slip yes okay so i lucked out though i made it as long as i could okay with the fabric you with had with the fabric i had i just cut all the way to the selvage basically uh made it as long as i could the fabric was this weirdo kind of cheesy polyester twill it was the perfect color. It's not something that I think ZD or I would want to wear in everyday life, but I was so very excited to use it for this. And it, remember, it's guys, it's a costume, and sometimes those, like, maybe we would call them ugly poly- polyesters or yeah. polyesters we wouldn't 
This circle skirt's going to be around for infinity. It gets to be worn in a number of shows now. And it it was this beautiful color. Since it was poly, it just kind of shone. It was a vibrant blue. No, it was perfect. It was just so perfect. I was so happy with it. Uh, And then, so I had added seam allowance to the skirt in my calculations, Uh and then I put it in that app, and Uh I didn't realize they added seam allowance. Oh, okay. So then I have like a little bit of extra, right? So I realized extra's always okay. Extra's okay, right? Also, this is a woven circle skirt on a performer. Right. Everyone's waist is different. And you may measure your waist and then sit down mm-hmm. and like eat something or whatever, and it might get a little bigger. I say you always need a little room for the lunch baby. So you're saying what ZD and mm-hmm. I are saying is with this app, it's lovely and everything, but you might want to add a little ease. So if, which is what I did if on her accident. waist was 30 inches, you might want to make that skirt 31 or 31, 31 and a half yeah. or 32. So I inserted the invisible zipper, and then I put a waistband on it. Right. Especially because it has a waistband. It's going to stay up. And I, ta- I put a tabbed waistband on mm-hmm. it. I put a big old snap on it and okay. because it's a costume i love those tabs they, yeah so the tab with this gigantic metal snap it was hidden it was right. on the inside but you know what else i did mom i put some elastic the, in the waistband yeah yep. even though it wasn't like quote unquote gathered and a gathered mm-hmm. waistband and i tried it on her mm-hmm. and i only had the elastic sewn in one edge right. of the waistband i tried it on her and i tightened the elastic a little bit and she said uh-huh. oh yeah that feels real right. secure so she can dance in it right but it won't be too tight when she bends over. So it's like the skirt had some ease, but it had elastic. And then I was all like, I want some circle skirts. And I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put right. an inch or two, so inch basic, and a half of ease. Well, and, and basically put that elastic your in. elastic becomes your uh, waistband interface. That's too. right. Yes. Ex- no, that's exactly what I thought. You're stable. You know, it's, it not, it, it's not really stable, but whatever. Mm-hmm. And someday, this is a teaser. We will talk about how to make a waistband with elastic that you can adjust Mm -hmm. after it's made for your costumes. Okay, and so what I did, I didn't extend the elastic into the tab area, but I just secured it. Right, you secured it or sewed it down, whatever, yeah. And actually, the technique I use, it's going to be really similar. It's just how you put, like, your waistband on your jeans Mm -hmm. or anything like that, okay? uh, Another thing, if you're putting elastic in a waistband like that, and, you know, I'll do this even sometimes is sometimes I will, you know, take a few points to top stitch down that like vertically. Okay. So that especially, you know, depending on how that fits or how that person wears that, it it can roll down. Okay. So that would have been a good idea. And I do Mm want to make the point, the elastic wasn't secured to the waistline. Okay. Right. It was at the end. It was at the end. So what I'm saying is that if it was at the end, I might've then, you know, Put that in half and put another place uh-huh. that I stay just just a stitching line down, and I probably would have went through both that's, layers. Yeah, of the, that's a good idea. I would have went probably through both layers of the waistband. It's not going to show yeah. with the matching thread. <gasps> oh my god! And Mettler made a thread. This was, was I kept working with color. these weird colors. Yeah. That salmon over there couldn't find anything to match that except our, in our like old yeah. rayon thread, and then Mettler made a construction thread that matched better than any of our yeah. embroidery thread. It was so weird. Anyway, sorry. Got but excited. but <laughs> that will keep that band from rolling. Sometimes I've had to do it in four places, like okay. you know, side, sure. front, back, yeah. both sides. I mean, and you know, that's not going to show any place. No. And then, uh, so what this circle skirt does, especially for those of you who are wanting a skirt that maybe does hide a belly. That's true. Okay. These these skirts. Or make you look like you have a waistline. Yes. Like, yes. yes. What these skirts do is very close to the waist, they're so smooth because there's no darts right. or anything. And then they just continue to flow out. It's like a tutu that flops. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it can be really nice. Like, I know that pencil skirts are really in right now, but I seem to see a lot of people in the group saying, uh, I can't get this pencil skirt to look like I want it to look on my belly. And so, well, and then there's a whole issue of what's being marketed as a pencil skirt right yeah. now, which we won't get into. Um, so anyway, this is these um, quarter circle skirts, maybe out of like a bit of a stiffer fabric like right. a denim. They are, I, I love them. They're very flattering. For, yeah. The A-line silhouette yes. is always, 
you know, usually everybody's happy with that. A lot of it, it will kind of tick those boxes mm-hmm. for what a lot of people are looking for. So when you for. say like the half or uh-huh. whatever, what you get is you sort of get this A-line silhouette. And then at the bottom, you kind of get a little of a f- movement of a right. flutter. You know, right. you'll get a little bit. Let's talk about the bottom of a circle skirt, Mom. Okay. Everybody, okay, so since since we covered that, like, immediately from the waistline out, this is just increasing, increasing, increasing right. in dia- uh, excuse yes. me, in circumference, also in diameter, but uh, in circumference, the hemming can be challenging if you don't know what you need to look for or what you're doing, and you can't just, you can't, like, turn up a two-inch hem in a circle skirt, right? Two inches out, it's... You cannot turn okay. up a hem in anything that has a curve like this. Yeah. More than, like, oh, a quarter of yes, an inch. right. Okay, you can turn... Yeah, right. I mean, it's not going to work, guys. So, ZD, we have the video. We have the video it is made of the tiny hem techniques. Yes, ti- any of the tiny hem techniques will work. Yep. You can add a ruffle. Mm-hmm. You can add a piece of bias and then turn it up if I you want to do that. I think bias facing is right. maybe one of the most, like, I don't know... The bias facing or cutting a facing that is right. the circle. The right. circle. Yeah, People cut will cut the circle. Cut the circle. Yes. Um, those would maybe be, if you're if you're someone who really likes that finished like look, I don't know, if we're really. You know, kinda... I have no pro- Well, the other thing you could do is you could bias bind it. Yes. Okay. You can put a ruffle on it. Mm-hmm. You can put a piece of lace on it. Mm-hmm. You can put rickrack on it, which, you know. Um, when you think of the poodle skirts, yeah. if you're using the rickrack or some sort of trim for the leash on the poodle, then you, you can use it on the hem of the skirt, too. Also, kind of what I wish I would have done was just surged it <laughs> online I, for my costume. I, what, yeah, and more than likely, I, I wasn't here when you made that. Right. I would have probably surged it, turned it up, and top stitched so it. So that's what I did. Yep. Okay, but I did have a little bit of wavering on the bias you part. You did. And well, I, and you do have to be careful of that. Yeah. Yes, and actually, I took it out, and I redid it, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. But on that bias part, I just had to be careful. So what was your stitch length when you um, did I, your surging? I think it was like, oh, when I did my surging, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of long, like a three. That's what I would have done. And then on yeah. the top stitching, it was a three right. or a 3.5. Mm-hmm. But is a twill too, which is a more unstable. Well, life. and you maybe you needed to use your differential yeah. feed. Maybe, maybe needed you needed to, yes. to tighten it up a little bit. And you'll have to kind of test these things. But okay, for mm-hmm. a costume, I was like, yeah. I just should have searched this with blue thread. That's right. And been done with it. And it okay, or but it saved con- me time. Or you could have put a thread, and you could have added a, a decorative, a decorative like metallic thread, because on stage you might have got a little right, a little out bit of, of it. something. Yeah. But my friend was so. Happy right. with because of how it this fit skirt, and, then, and it was the fit and the color is what turned her on. And she was sourcing this costume for herself somewhat. This is such a huge show, hairspray. We had twenty nine cast members. All of the production staff was pretty much volunteer, and so she and she said she's Tracy. She's a lead, you know. And she said, "I want to look good. I'll buy whatever." You know, she said, "Tell me what you need, and I'll, you know, right. I'll buy it." Or, or you know, the worst thing is when you're doing a show, is there's always one person that gets the short end of the stick for right. some, and they don't even have to be a main character. But like, you have trouble sourcing their costume, or nothing fits them where you know you've been able to pull from the other places well, or something. And honestly, and it's so awful. I think that things were like, I think resources were just right. getting tight, and she right. she said, "I'll find it." So she was right. looking online. It's a little preview for the our next episode. She said, "Mallory, can I buy this um, jersey circle skirt?" And I said, "No." That's not what they're looking right. for. And when you put that, like that jersey, I, in fact, I imagined it wasn't a circle and that it was also like a rayon spandex, like a real mm-hmm. thin fabric. It would it would have been flowy and limp. And that's not what they were looking for. They were going to put it over a crinoline. Right. They were going to do right. that. You know, it wasn't. This needed to be a heavier, right. stiffer skirt than what that was. Right. So, and that is also the problem in people sourcing their yes. own costumes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. They don't understand fabric, and mm-hmm. they don't know the drape. Right. And when someone's describing something, you know, they don't. And sometimes, like you said, it'll say a circle skirt, and you'll look at it, and you know and it's not. And you know not. it's not a circle skirt. Right. Yeah. right. So she asked me, and I said, oh, no. And then right. I could not believe it. I was doing something else for her, and then I found that fabric, and I was just like, it was meant to be. Right. Uh, so anyway, that ended up working out nicely. So just little lessons from that specific right. project was to add a little ease, but then 
give myself that elastic in there. I yeah. just I well, made her ela- so much happier. I have used elastic often in many waistbands on many garments as my basically interfacing. I don't think it's wrong to say it, it that way. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. It yeah. feels good. This was a thicker wider the right thicker one inch elastic right, right yeah i mean you have to be you have to you know you have to make sure that the elastic matches up with what Top you want stitching and that, that down that. vertically i should do that because yeah. we're going to get that skirt back um mm-hmm. i should do that uh because that that will be helpful is that skirt going in our um stash or something yep oh okay. i mean i didn't get paid yep. to make it so it's my skirt. so it's ours now. Uh, well i told liz i was like this skirt fits you so i'll you keep know, it the next other, time you need the it the other no. <laughs> the other thing we have is we have a and you might not have done this but before that skirt left my house, I would have put our our um, tag in it. Yeah, and I didn't do that. Right. And you're and, right. And you did it later. That. But people say, "Oh no, this belonged to the theater." And I'm like, "No, see this right here? It says Donahue Designs, and that's us." Yep. Ta-da. You know, and I bought like a thousand of those at one time because right. what would happen is somebody would say, "We need this really bad," and they'd say, "But we don't have any money," and I would say, "I can make it, but it will be my skirt." Mm-hmm. You know. And, I mean, they were thrilled. They got their skirt, and I took it back. Right. Because I, I, it was, I mean, this was our fabric, Yeah, too. yeah, absolutely. It was our fabric, our labor, and everything, you know. And you know what? They could borrow it from us again. Right, right. right. Of course, of course. And actually, kind of been getting re-involved with the costume community here in Columbia, and everybody's being, like, super nice. I think people realize they really need to work together, you yeah. know, and stuff. So, anyway, yeah, so we'll have that skirt back. Because we want it. I guess if it was something we really didn't want, you know, we could Well, that can happen. It. Sometimes you know, of you're course. like, well, I don't, like, well, I'm not I don't want that, this little you know. sash back I yeah, made you right. or whatever. Right. And, you know, in our next episode, not only will we talk about circle skirts and the variations, but we can talk about what else that shape can be used for. Yeah. I Okay. You got that written down? Because yeah. I was going to bring that up. Good. I'm glad you wrote that down. All right, everybody. Well, that's our little intro. So the basic circle skirt, some of the hemming. It, they are a lovely thing to get down, to have in your repertoire. Yeah. It's a good shape to know I about. I honestly can't remember the last time I made one, but when that's what she said she needed... And then I found the fabric. I thought, this is something I know I will be able to do for her. The other thing I had to do for her was drafting something that I wasn't as confident about. Right. But this one I was, which which was still amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this one was... Um, something I knew I could I could do. I was really felt very confident going into it. Before you give your little end thing, or your um, the one thing I want to say is. Did we we stayed we did stay on subject pretty well this pretty time. Pretty much. I yeah. think I think y'all yeah. should well, like understand oh, it's possible. I want a pat okay. on the back for not making the tangents too, too numerous terrible. and too too uh We'll leave yeah. those for the next episode. Long and out. Yeah, we'll see what we can do next time. Okay. Uh, thank you all for listening. You can get a hold of me at Mallory at Sohere.com. You can find us on Instagram. We are at Sohere.com and Z D, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.